Welcome to Lifestyle Strength, your guide to mastering health and well-being in the real world. I'm Ariel, a massage therapist with over a decade of experience in holistic health. And I'm here with Lucas, a seasoned fitness coach who's transformed the lives of hundreds in Northwest Arkansas. We're here to share real stories and expert insights about embracing a healthy lifestyle while balancing the everyday hustle. Join us as we explore practical ways to achieve wellness and thrive amidst life's challenges. Let's dive in. There's a, you know, I find it interesting. I, I know Ariel and I have talked about this before. I'm in a unique situation because when people come to me, they know that they're going to have to work. Mm-hmm. Like it's innate when you come in to train yeah. and get stronger. Like we're going to train together, but you know that there are going to be things that you have to do on your own. Uh-huh. And people kind of accept that. Yeah. Even though I still have to like, yes. you know, work with them and motivate them and get them to do those things. Yeah. Are there things that you do to get them from, you know, coming in for treatment to, mm-hmm. to, to go through the motions and do the things that you need to do for them? Yeah. Anything you found that kind of clicks with those people who, mm-hmm. you know, you can get to go do that homework or mm-hmm. those extra things and go actually book the appointment with Ariel? Right, yes, right, you know? right. That's well, you know, so some of it is, uh, I mean, pain is a powerful motivator. Yeah. <laughs> You know, so the the avoidance of, of pain yes. um, is, is kind of how we start. You know, okay. so it's like, all right, why are you coming to see us? Okay, if you want to achieve this, then you need to do this right. in order to get there. Mm-hmm. Um, so we try and start small, and and then usually we're we're also trying to keep things the body moving forward. So having regular check ins with people. Uh, Philip is my rehab director in the office too, so he he does a good job with connecting people and then. Him, myself, like we're how, how's stuff going at home? Mm-hmm. How are you doing on mm-hmm. your own? How often have you been doing it? Yeah. Okay. That accountability. Yeah. Piece. yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever find? Because I know we we are both in a well, we're all three in a field where we don't necessarily have people coming to us when they're feeling great. Um, their weights fantastic. <laughs> their <laughs> no. stress levels non-existent. You know, we, we it's always a problem. Yeah, we don't. There's right. always a problem. Yeah. So we typically get clientele that come in yeah. with a problem. Yeah. Now, sometimes it doesn't matter how much we outline it, whether you're doing it visually with X-rays yeah. and whether you're talking it through with them. You're empowering them through knowledge about their body, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter how many times you repeat showing them how to do a bicep curl. <laughs> um, my question to you is. Do you find, because I know I find, that even though I'm saying, hey, to reach this goal that you want and to get you out of pain, the minute something feels a little better, the minute they're down a couple pounds, stop doing it. Stop doing it. Uh Whether it's because they're like, oh, I can can maintain it on my own. I don't need to work. I can just do this workout on my own. Uh Or I don't need massage in Cairo because I'll use a foam roller. Or, oh, Lord forbid, I hear this all the time. Oh, I just have my husband or my wife stand on my back (laughs) and pop my back. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you have that? And what does that look like to bring somebody back? Because we talk so much about health, wellness, and fitness, but... They're stalls. People get this idea in their mind, I don't need to continue. Right. Yeah. Well, so one of the things I usually, like, as people are improving, too, when, they, when they're when they feeling better, I usually say, now I'm concerned. Mm. Mm. Okay. I like that. And so, and, yeah. and, and then what I bring up, I'm concerned because you're feeling better. And what do most people do when they feel better? <laughs> Put off they, the ass. They, yeah. yeah. They mm-hmm. stop doing what it took to get to that point mm-hmm. in the first place. Mm-hmm. And helping them understand too, like we've only been here for a couple of visits or you know a month, and you you have had forty years before that that yes. you've been unhealthy, your spine's been bad, and so that's why I'm concerned because I don't want you to let the foot off the gas. We right. we still have a lot of work to do, right? Because um, remember, our ultimate goal is not just that you feel better, but that you're functioning. Yeah. And so that we can also bring back some of the objective measurements as well. Like, all right, yes, you're feeling better, but remember. Objectively, we're trying to get here, right. and by, by no means are we anywhere close to here. Right, so that, right. that usually helps. Um, and then, too, what I what I encourage people is like, all right, when are you going to stop exercising, or when are you going to stop eating health? When are you going to stop brushing your teeth? Why, why do you brush your teeth every day? <laughs> right, mm-hmm. right. Again, uh, the dental example. People, it, I think that clicks with people because yeah. it's like, why are you brushing your teeth every day? Yeah. Are you going to get to the point that you have to stop? No. No. Okay. Then when are you going to have to stop taking care of your body? Never. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And, and it all depends on, okay, what do you want as you get older? Do you want health and wellness and vitality, mm-hmm. or do you want to be sick on multiple meds and in the nursing home? Right. And so even kind of helping try to lay that out, too, is a powerful motivator. That's why I take care of my health and do things on a regular basis, yeah. getting adjusted, exercising, eating healthy. Again, because, like, for me, 
I feel great. Yeah. I want to stay there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that that's your motivator is like, hey, if I feel good, let's let's keep that up. Yeah. The goal yeah. is maintenance. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think, the, uh, I think a lot absolutely. of times we we always try to shoot for this point that we're gonna arrive. Yeah. And just have it all mm -hmm. figured out. Mm -hmm. Which will never happen. Which will never happen. <laughs> right? And it's like a harsh reality to uh -huh. accept. Yeah, absolutely. It is. And it's like, okay, so you're saying uh, the rest of my life, yeah, but is it worth it? Yes, 100%. Yeah. It's worth it. Well, I think over time, too, it's, you know, you say the rest of your life, like it's going to be that hard. Like right. the, the goal is like, like the idea of maintenance is like, maintaining sounds a lot easier than just yeah. striving to figure this thing out. Right. Correct. Do you want to have to strive over and over again because right. you kept falling off? Right. Or do you just want to be able to like, oh, this is just part of my life now. Correct. This is just, right. I can roll with it. Well, yeah. and if you think we're using the dental, like you're saying, if you point that out to them while well, you're going to brush your teeth to the end of your life, they're like, well, okay, because it doesn't get harder. Right. But what happens when you stop brushing your teeth? And you're not taking care of your yep. dental hygiene. Yep. And now you have cavities. And now you've got teeth pulled and root canals. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I, just from the, on that topic, my, my brother growing up, quite a bit older than me, uh -huh. his key things that he told me, uh -huh. he said, Errol, take care of your teeth and don't ever touch a cigarette. Because yep. <laughs> he had an addiction to cigarettes, but uh -huh. he had never taken care of his teeth. And it's very expensive. Mm -hmm. But that's that example of like, a lot of times, I know my clientele will fall off that bandwagon and then they'll come back and I always describe it as onion layers mm -hmm. and we're taking off a layer and we're getting to the next layer. So my other question to you, because I know a lot of people fall in this category, is um, they say, I went in to see him, I was in pain, I felt better for a day or two and or maybe they didn't even feel better and mm -hmm. they're like, it got worse or something new popped yeah. up. Does that tend to happen? Because I know it happens in my field where a lot of times we're just kind of exposing you to the next thing. Because like you said, once you're feeling good, that's when we got a problem. Because yeah. the reality is a lot of times you, when we're pulling things away, we're exposing things. And sometimes it can get a little worse, a little yeah. yucky before it's going to get better. Oh, yeah. Do you find that? Yeah, and uh, usually on someone's first visit too, um, I'm prepping them like, okay, so here's the three possibilities of today's visit. One, you're going to feel no change. That's the most likely because you've had X, Y, and Z for however long, you yes. know, they come in. So most likely you're not going to feel any different. Um, second likely is you're going to feel sore or worse. Okay. Um, so especially if we have trauma history, for example, someone that comes in from a car accident and they didn't de deal with it, mm -hmm. scar tissue formation. And so we're going to be breaking down scar tissue, and that mm -hmm. creates an inflammatory response. And so then with inflammation, you get pain. Right. Um, and so th I'm usually prepping people, especially like, yeah, you're going to be probably in more pain. You're going to be sore. Like you went to the gym mm -hmm. and worked out for the first time in a very long time. Wow, and, wait, uh, I use that. Yeah, right. That's the reference I use yeah, in my right. practice. What is it? Hey, hey I yeah. use the same reference. Stop. Oh, jeez. That's what you do. Yeah. I tell people, I was like, the first two weeks of this are going to suck. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be hard. <laughs> yep. And then helping them. And, and I think what helps too, though, is laying out, okay, my expectations. Like, mm -hmm. I think you're going to feel better here based off my experience. I think it's going to take you a couple weeks or I think it's going to take you a month mm -hmm. for you to actually start feeling better. Right. Uh, but yeah, most of the time, especially at the beginning, it's a, it's a slow going process. Right. I actually get jealous of some of those people that like I adjust them. Mm -hmm. They get up and they're like, holy crap, I feel like a million bucks. <laughs> wow. Ne never happened for me. Yeah. And, and you know, they're, they're more of the unique person yeah. where, you know, like you probably had that happen too, where you mm -hmm. massage someone like, I feel fantastic. Yes. I'm like, good for you. Mm -hmm. Now I'm concerned. Yes. Yes, exactly. Cause <laughs> I'm, I'm imagine not going to see you. There's a lot of gratitude with that though. <laughs> yeah, like is. I imagine that was one of the best responses. Like as, yeah. as, as many concerns that can arise yeah. from that. Like I imagine for you, that's really it's gratifying. Fun. Yeah. It's fun. You know, you, uh, we chiropractic miracles is what we call it. You know, you get get those people that come in, they can't walk, you adjust them, and and then they're walking out the door. That stuff's cool. Wow. Um, and those are usually again more acute cases. Like, mm -hmm. right. I woke up and I couldn't move. They come in, they get adjusted, and boom, they're able right. to move again. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's hard? Like, because obviously, like social media, I'm sure plays a role in mm -hmm. what people's perspective perspective of what 
or what they can expect to feel mm-hmm. like, and they mm-hmm. see stuff like that online, do they come in with those expectations? Like some, some do, mm. some do, and we usually will ask them too. Like, you know, do you ex- how how quickly do you expect to get this issue resolved? Right. Like right off the bat, like one of the first questions we ask. Yeah. Uh, and so that helps us to know where they're at. Mm-hmm. And then that way we can, based off of their case, like, yeah, I expect that for you too. Or, no, I don't expect that for you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then here's a reality what, check. Yeah. Exactly. yeah, managing expectations. That also helps you as a chiropractor so that you're having less negative uh, reviews, essentially. Mm-hmm. Less negative experiences through your door. Yeah. Because you're like, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let, let's manage these expectations right mm-hmm. now. Like, I'm, you know, I'm not God. I'm not going to fix it in one day. And I don't That's know right. if, I don't know if you tell people this, but they're always like, well, I just, I just thought that, you know, we'd be able to resolve this quicker. And I'd be like, oh, so how long has it been going on? Well, probably about 20 years. Yeah. I said, okay, well, let's double that. <laughs> and some of them come in and they're already 60. And they're like, well, I'm going to be dead. I say, well, it sounds like you're going to spend the rest of your retirement with me. Yep. That's really what I say. Yeah. I have I have clients who, you know, they've seen me every other week for 10 years and they've budgeted me into their retirement yep. plan. That as they should. As they should, right? That's the the idea is, is that health, wellness, and fitness, that lifestyle doesn't end until you die. Correct. Right? Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. We want to invite you back next week as we continue the conversation and be sure to follow us on social media to get all of our content and clips and anything you might have missed. Again, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.